Let me start with uh, a, a, quite a tough one, uh, but it, it, it's meant to set the ground for our conversation. Uh, the Labour Party keeps saying that the Conservatives crashed the economy, but surely you would accept something we've talked about all afternoon. Uh, energy prices are global, as is inflation, and higher interest rates are that way as well. Don't you have to up your game in the criticism of what this government is doing and the explanation of why we're in difficulties? Well, I'll say, look, first of all, what I'd like to say is what Elliot was saying and talking about in terms of the Taxpayers' Alliance. Uh, what they need to do is they need to, first of all, investigate all of the corruption during COVID, uh, the uh, unusable uh, PPE, uh, the test and trace uh, money that was lost in Nightingale hospitals that was set up and they never used and what happened to them, what happened to the cost of them, what happened to the materials used in them. Uh, and what decisions were taken there. So first of all, Rishi Sunak's uh, record, for whilst we all appreciate the furlough funding that he put in, there was almost 15 million billion pounds that was lost through not investigating frauds uh, and, and PPE uh, purchases, which were not usable uh, to do that. So I think that's first of all. Uh, secondly, in relation to your question, uh, I think it's important for us to look at how this government has dealt with all of this. Uh, it has dealt with this mini budget uh, that, uh, you know, uh, Liz Truss uh, and Kwasi Kwarteng came in on, on, a, on a wild charge uh, of trying to say free for all. But above all that, uh, go back to Brexit as well. A million vacancies uh, in our markets uh, at the moment was huge. Uh, and that would add up to a huge amount of taxation uh, if we were to do that right. So, yes, you know, there are other issues uh, apart from what you've raised. And we right. just look at all those as well. I uh, didn't interrupt that because a very fair and crisp analysis. And I, I accept a lot of it, not all of it. But I tell you what, in terms of what you would do, and I hear the criticism that you've made of, of, of Rishi as Chancellor and Rishi as Prime Minister, Sakir Starmer, your leader, had the golden opportunity at party conference to give us a clearer idea of what he'd be doing on the economy. And in what I personally thought was a powerful uh, speech, it was all about more spending on doctors, nurses, police officers, education. That was what the plan was. Andrew Rawnsley says in The Observer, second time I've mentioned Andrew, but I know you will have read it. He says that if the Tories do now what they're planning to do, the economy will be in such a state that you guys wouldn't want to inherit it. You will not be able to do any of that unless you raise taxes even more. Do you really want that? Well, yes, we want to be able to serve the country. We want to be able to serve the people. We want to be able to serve... The, uh, the most vulnerable people in society, uh, which this government hasn't done and is not doing that. What has been proposed uh, by uh, Rachel Reeves, our, our shadow chancellor, uh, is to look at issues uh, around the windfall tax, which hasn't been properly put in yet at the moment. Uh, there's the non-dom uh, non, uh, non funding, uh, which needs to be looked at as well. Uh, which hasn't come through. So that the significant, uh, significant other funding that needs to come in. Uh, and of course, the issue of those with the broadest shoulders bearing uh, the, the, the broadest of the loads uh, is an issue in terms of direct taxation and not taxing those people uh, that, are, that are not prepared or able to do that, which is across the board, which is what the Tories are proposing. You one final point, and we, we, we touched upon it with the other guests as well, and, and that is the National Health Service, which Keir spoke a great deal about at the party conference. Um, this government, this Tory government, says it's ring-fenced, it will have what it needs, there are going to be uh, no cuts there for the NHS. Wes Streeting, your shadow health secretary, intrigued me when he said there is a need for urgent structural reform of the NHS before the signing of the checkbook begins. Does that mean that reform well, would be a condition of improved funding for the NHS if your party forms the next government? Well, I think one of the key things we're going to look at is the internal market uh, that the Ma Maggie Thatcher brought into the National Health Service. And yet we haven't fully, uh, we, we're stuck by the, by, by the shackles of that at the moment. So in terms of what Wes is saying is right, but in no way will Wes say, that we need to cut funding from the National Health Service. He knows the desperate need. I myself know the desperate need. I had a kidney transplant 
in 2014. Uh, and I'm here because of the great work of the National Health Service and all the people involved, from writing consultants to nurses and to all the staff that work there. 